let's come back to Europe and uh, the floor is for you, Mohamed. Hello, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here to share with you uh, my presentation. I will try to, to share the slides. You can see? Yes. Okay. Okay, that's fine. So, uh, the subject is about uh, access control, pyramids, and corporate social uh, responsibility. Uh, so, it's kind of a work in progress, co authored by, with um, Mr. Sabri Boubakar from uh, OM Normandy and uh, Mohamed Zouawi from uh, EO of Bourgogne, University of Bourgogne. So let's start with uh, the motivation of uh, this paper. Um, Glovner, for example, uh, so, so the motivation comes basically from the literature review. Uh, for example, Glovner in 2019 find that CSR strategies depend largely on the ownership structure of the firm. The question is how other studies show that the effects of ownership structure on CSR depends on first on them, show that concentration of ownership has a negative e effect on CSR performance, on CSR communication, CSR activities, and so on. Second, uh, it depends also on the nature of the company. For example, um, institutional investors or bankers have good or positive e performance, whereas, for example, families access socially. For example, long-term investors have better effects on the CSR than short-term investors. Now, our question is: How about the effects of separation of ownership and control? Uh, just. I remind you that separation of ownership and control, it means that when the control shareholder has voting rights, a level of voting rights higher than the level of its ownership or its cash flow rights. So what about the literary review and what said the literary review about separation of ownership and control or excess control, it's the same thing. So the literary review that examines this phenomenon shows negative effect on financial performance and concludes that as the control shareholders' voting rights are higher than her ownership rights, she would be less interested on the firm's financial performance. And she's able to make strategic decisions without significant opposition from, for example, minority shareholders or even the other stakeholders. Uh, the separation of ownership and control is driven by the wide usage of control enhancing mechanisms such as pyramidal groups for example and dual class shares um, second there are some factors that can mitigate the, the negative effect of the separation uh, of course those factors are linked to the ownership uh, structure for example when we have uh, many large shareholders in the company it constitutes a monitoring tool that mitigates the opportunistic behavior caused by the excess control. For example, they, the, the multiple large shareholders, they can force the managers to communicate more transparent information about the strategy of the firm, namely about the CSR activities. Uh, also, the nature of shareholders, I said, for example, when uh, the control shareholder is an institutional investor or a bank, we have more or better uh, positive uh, effect on CSR and when uh, it's a family it's not perceived as socially responsible. Now let's move to the research sample. Our sample is composed by 129 firms listed on the SPF uh, 120 index of the Paris Stock Exchange. Sample period is between 2003 and 2017 so at the end we have 1083 firm year observations the ownership and control data are hand collected from firms' annual reports and from uh, the websites of uh, the firms. We require 10% as the minimum threshold of voting rights by which the ultimate control shareholder can exercise substantial control. 
So now why we focus on France or context? First, many arguments. Uh, first, compared to large Anglo-Saxon countries like United States and UK, French-listed firms are characterized by a concentrated ownership structure and by large control ownership wage or control ownership excess. Second, large control shareholders often act as chief executive officer or manage the firm and manager. Third, the French corporate governance context grants more power to decision makers than to minority shareholders, like uh, in USA, for example. And finally, large proportion of French listed firms have multi large shareholders with substantial voting rights. Uh, our variables first, uh, the dependent variable is the corporate social performance, uh, which is a combined score me uh, that measures the quality of six dimensions like human re rights, human resources, environment, uh, business behavior, corporate governance, and community involvement. The excess control variables here we have five. Uh, variables like for example the first one it's it's a dummy variable that takes the value of one if the voting rights are different from cash flow rights and zero otherwise excess is the difference between voting rights and cash flow rights wage is kind of a ratio so we take for example the excess I mean the difference uh, divided by uh, the control rights and we have two other variables wage high and wage high too. Uh, the control variables we use, uh, control variables that most used in uh, studies that are interested on uh, CSR uh, performance, like the, the size of the company, the, the, the performance, the account performance, and so on. Uh, our, in our model, we uh, rigorous um, the CSR on the separation or the excess control uh, variable and the other control variables. So let's start with the analysis. So in this table, uh, we have many uh, models with uh, econometrics, different econometrics uh, specifications like OLS, WLS, Fama and Macbeth, New Way, uh, West, uh, and so on. So th the most important um, result here is that uh, all um, the models or models from two to six show a negative and significant effect of separation, I mean, excess control, on the CSR performance. In the second table or following table, we uh, it's kind of a robustness check. So we use the other um, proxies or the other variables of separation like excess uh, control, wage, which high, which high two. So all the four uh, variables show negative effects on CSR performance. Uh, here we check for the endogeneity and we use two SLS uh, method and uh, the PSM method and the two methods show a negative effect also of separation on the CSR performance. Um, in this table we have an additional test. Um, so in this table we split for example uh, in the first two columns we split the sample according to large Multiple large shareholders. For example, in the in the first in the first column, we have just one large shareholder, which is the control shareholder, and in this case, the effect of separation, uh, uh, the negative effect of separation remains. I mean, it's significantly negative. In the column, we have more than one large shareholders. We have two, three, and so on. And in this case, the significant and negative effect disappears. Uh, when we have more than uh, one shareholder. In the second uh, specification, we, we focus on family uh, business. So in column three, we have only business, uh, family business firms. And in column four, we don't have uh, family firms as control shareholder. So both uh, columns show negative effect of separation. But if you can notice here in column three, we have the coefficient of column three is almost the double, uh, is minus 6.92. And when we don't have family fir firms, it's minus three. So there is, uh, so we can say that family business enhance more the negative effect of separation. Um, after that, we, we split our sample according uh, to, to the state uh, as controller shareholder. So for example, in 
Column five, we have the state as the controlling shareholder, and we can see that the effect of separation uh, disappear. And in column six, we have the other case, I mean, when the state is not the control shareholder. So we can see here, even if, for example, the state is not um, or doesn't control directly uh, the firm, even if there is a direct control, even in this case, we, we, uh, we keep the public interest uh, or the public interest remains the rule. Let's move to table eight. So in this uh, table, we distinguish between the mechanisms of separation and, for example, pyramidal structure and uh, double voting rights. And those results show that there is a negative and significant effect on CSR from both, I mean, pyramidal structure and double voting rights. Uh, in the following table, we, uh, we are interested on the six dimensions of CSR, I mean, uh, governance dimension, environment, social, and so on. What's interesting to see here is that the negative effect of separation is on the six dimensions, not only, for example, on governance score or environment score, but it's, uh, we have negative effect on the six dimensions. In the last table, uh, we just uh, uh, our, uh, our uh, va dividend variable uh, by another one uh, downloaded thanks to another database, Asset4, and we around the, the regressions of the first table, and we have almost the same results. I mean, a significant and negative effect of separation on the uh, CSR performs. So to, to summarize now, we can say that firms having excess control achieve significantly lower CSR performance than firms without excess control. Second, the negative effect of excess control comes from both pyramids and double voting rights. And this negative effect affects all the components of CSR, including social dimension, environment, governance. Family ownership enhances the negative effect of excess control, whereas multiple large shareholder or state ownership can neutralize this negative effect. And finally, the, the findings are robust to a number of checks like uh, indigenity concerns using alternative sample composition and alternative uh, regression framework. So to, to conclude, we can say that uh, our results are consistent with the expropriation hypothesis where a contrary shareholder holding significant higher voting rights compared to their uh, voting uh, cash flow rights, sorry, they influence the management to invest less to satisfy not only my, minority share, shareholders, but also the other uh, stakeholders. Um, as this, this paper is kind of um, work in progress, uh, we have a, uh, an important question. Is, uh, the question is, so what? I mean, so what if uh, the excess control affect negatively the CSA performance? Uh, what kind of implications uh, can this result have? Has? So first, okay, we can say that we can recommend, for example, um, investors who are more inclined to invest in uh, CSR firms or to choose firms uh, based on CSR criteria to avoid or to be more careful when there's significant um, excess control. Same advice for, um, for extra financial rating agencies, for example, when they assess CSR performance, they can have a look on the ownership structure uh, to detect any significant excess control or even to add this variable to their assessment methodology. Thank you for your attention.